Hi everybody, welcome back to The Young Grower. So in this video, I'm going to be starting off my seeds from the Heritage Seed Library. Yeah, I've got lots of cool, rare varieties to grow this year. So before we get to sowing these seeds, I thought we could talk about the Heritage Seed Library and just explain it a little bit to you. So this is the first time I've ever got seeds from them. Yeah, you cannot buy these seeds in the shops, they are rare. So how the Heritage Seed Library works is you pay a yearly membership fee and for that you get six packs of rare seeds a year so in December they send out a list of seeds what they have available for the year and you can go and click what seeds you want and try and grow something that is very rare and they also recommend that you try and save these seeds because they are open pollinated varieties meaning that you can save true seeds if you have pollinated them correctly with the same mother plant yeah what is absolutely amazing and for me saving my own seeds so the following year they grow better than what they did previously is 100% worth it and it just gives you a bit more of connection to your food plus you've got free seeds out of it and you haven't got to buy them next year so you can pick a few different varieties to try out and just keep going and going but like I say this is my first year I've ever grew anything from the heritage seed library so I've noticed a few other YouTubers and that have done this previously and got seeds from them. That's why I've tried it. I know Erica at Erica's Little Welsh Garden has had success with these and she would recommend getting them. And that's why I got my membership to try out this year. So I can hear you saying £18 a year is a lot of money for only six packs of seeds. But in my opinion, it is worth it because you're getting seeds that you cannot get anywhere else. And at the same time, you're also helping to protect these seeds so they can be grown for future generations to enjoy and to benefit from. Because the problem is, if no one grows these seeds like this organisation is doing, that they will end up losing them and there will be... Some of these seeds will just disappear. And yeah, we don't want that to happen. We want to keep our history of growing. The problem is, these days, too many big companies are creating hybrid seeds. So they do certain things. I like true organic heritage seeds that I know what I'm growing. I'm starting to ramble on a little bit, just like I normally do, but I have a big passion for heritage and heirloom seeds. It's the one thing that's got me really into growing is learning the history of them. So let's look at the varieties that I've chose to grow this year. It was hard to pick on the list, there was so many. So yeah, let's have a look at the six varieties I have. So the first variety that I picked was a pea called Mummy's Pea. This variety has been grown near Dorset for as long as local memory goes. There was a suggestion that they originally were found in the tomb. There is thought to be a link between local landowning family, the Portmans, and the 1922 exhibition that unveiled the Tutankhamun tomb. These are a tall variety that grow 1.5 metres, white flowered, produce well filled pods of sweet peas. So yeah, I can't wait to grow this variety. If you watched my BBC Gardens World video, you'll remember that I mentioned a purple potted pea and this one here is a white pea. But again, these stories, are, they're not guaranteed stories. That's what I love about the history. They're stories passed down through the generation. I tried to get the purple potted pea from Baker Creek Seeds, but with everything that's going on, we couldn't actually get them shipped over here. So I end up going for these ones. I can't 100% say these are the ones, but the story sounds awesome. They could still have a connection to Tutankhamun's tomb. What just makes the mystery of growing heritage seeds even more interesting. Yeah, so we got that pea to grow. Then I also picked another pea. This one is called Clark's Beltany Blue. So it says, this heirloom variety has been grown on our donor's great-grandfather's farm since at least 1850, but possibly back as far as 1815. This tall, around 1.6 meters, prolific and vigorous pea produces beautiful pale pink and rich maroon flowers, followed by a heavy crop of purple pods. These peas have a sweet and smooth flavor, becoming even sweeter when cooked. So to harvest is around 100 days and I've got 10 of these seeds. So I really cannot wait to try that variety. They sound amazing and they're going to look absolutely beautiful hopefully in the no dig kitchen garden. Yeah, the description sounds 
beautiful. So they're the two pea varieties that I've got from them. So the next variety I'm growing is a melon and that is called green nutmeg. Nutmeg was the name of one of the oldest melons known. Though it once referred to a definitive type, years of cultivation providing numerous variations. There's not much on the history of this just on their website. It states about it being recorded in the 1935 New York cucumber book or something saying it is one of the easiest out of this variation to grow. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what this does. I love melons, so yeah. And then we have a Dudi Mo Sayed. So this one here, I didn't know what to pick, so I thought, let's try this out. I believe my plot neighbor actually likes it, so I haven't told her I got the seeds. This is where it turns out it's not the actual plant. But the description for this, it says, organically collected from the Highfields area of Leicester and named after the donor, Mo acquired the seeds from a friend whose family saved their own seeds on their farm in India. The duty is slightly later than some, but will produce a fruit the size of a small child. So I cannot wait to try this one out. My plot neighbor originally comes from Bangladesh and I believe this is what they grow over there. Yeah, so we got five seeds, so hopefully I can start some off for me and give her a couple. But these will definitely be growing on a trellis arch. So the next variety I have is a patty pan squash called Summer Sun. And the description on their website, it says, Deserving of its name, the sprawling bush type produces lots of small yellow summer patty pans. The succulent scalloped fruit often seen in expensive imported supermarket packs are excellently sliced and steamed. When mature, make great individual stuffing dishes. So this year is the last time they were offering it on their website because it'll be commercially available. And then the last variety I got is Afghan Purple Carrot. So the description of this, I had to get it. It just sounded so cool. But it says, Egyptian cave paintings dating back to around 2000 BC shown what is thought to be a purple carrot. The orange varieties are familiar with today and were not developed until the 16th century. Donated by the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, Virginia, USA, this purple carrot produces 20 to 25 centimeter roots that will, when sliced, reveal a bright yellow core. They have a more pronounced carroty flavor than orange varieties and also show some resistance to carrot fly. What is perfect? Yeah, so we had to get them to try out not going to be sowing these today so now i've rambled on on and on about these varieties and what i'm growing but i wanted to just take some time to sit and talk about them because for me it's about knowing where my seeds come from learning the history and i hope this encourages some of you to just try and learn a bit more about your seeds you'll be quite surprised where things come from if you just do a little bit of research so i'm not going to take up much more of your time we're going to get these sown quickly then yeah leave them in the polytunnel to germinate and then we'll follow them throughout the year and see how they get on but let's actually get to putting some seeds in some compost so i've already started to prepare i have done some pots up for the peas and i've done some module trays up i like to do my peas this way i've started some of my other heirloom varieties that i've saved the seeds from but yeah, let's just get to doing this quickly. So in these trays are uh, multi-purpose compost. And what I'm going to do is just get the seeds. The first ones I'm doing are the summer sun squash. And we have three seeds from them. And I'm just going to push them down. And when I do it, I'm going to pull it on the side. This way they won't um, let water sit on them and rot. Because if you put them in like that, water could sit on it and rot it. But if it's like that, the water is just going to run straight down then I'm going to push them down there we go and then I'm going to do the same to the next two and then I'm just going to cover them back over firm it down around and then we're going to get a label and label it next we're going to do the green nutmeg melon and then we have seven of these seeds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the other tray and I'm going to do one tray with two seeds and then the rest I will do one in each. There we go. And then we want to get the label and label it. 
and then we're going to do the next one and that is the Dudi, the Mul Sayed, very big seeds. And then again, the most important thing, we want to label it. And I'm actually going to put the label in this one because there's no seed here. So this is just to remind me that there's only going to be five that germinate, hopefully. So that's all those ones sewn into these trays. Give them a good watering in a moment, but for now we'll just put them back there. So now we are on to do the peas. So I already prepared these pots. So I'm not going to need this many as I didn't realise how many seeds I had before I prepared them. But I think we're going to aim for around three seeds per pot. First, I'm going to do the mummy's pea. And there's ten seeds, so I'm just going to do four in that pot. I'm going to push them down. I'm going to say around two to five centimetres. I go for about five. We've got the mummy's pea. And then we have the Clark's Botany Blue left to do. So I'm just going to do exactly the same as what I've just done. You could sow your peas direct if you wanted to, but for me, I get a better result sowing them indoors and then planting out an established plant. At least that way the moist aren't going to eat the peas. So we've got three pots of each. We do not need these, so let's get these moved out of the way. So now we need to give them a good water. So that is all the Heritage Seed Library seed sown for today. I will sell these Afghan purple carrots in the coming week. Yeah, I need to get around to setting up my grow system in here first, so keep an eye out for that video. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button, give it a like and leave a comment. So I'm going to leave these seeds in the unheated polytunnel for a little while, but we'll check up on them once they start to germinate and then we will eventually plant them out down in the no dig kitchen garden. Well, it's going to be amazing, but I'd just like to give a big thank you for the Heritage Seed Library for what they actually do because if it wasn't for organizations like this we would have lost so many seeds yeah and I love growing old seeds heritage seeds heirloom seeds one thing I love about them all is they're open pollinated mean you can save true seeds from that plant to grow on the following year I'm still learning about all that I've learned so much though in the last year or two that hopefully soon I can start doing videos about saving seeds but we are going to follow these and then hopefully we can save some seeds from them so that'll show you how to do it fingers crossed yeah I'm rambling on once again but I'm hoping this has inspired you to just think about what you're growing or try and read into something or have a look I don't think I've got anything else to say I think I've said everything if I haven't said anything I will say it in the next video but thank you all for watching and we'll see each other soon.